All right. Hello, everyone. It's great to see so many of you guys here today. Welcome to the Pre-Dental Association's Interview Prep Workshop. Um, congratulations to every one of you that has already gotten an interview. Um, that's, that's really great. Um, hopefully this session and this workshop will help you, you know, brush up any skills and polish any skills that you want and just make you more confident. Um, so I'm one of your hosts, I'm Delisha. I'm on the events team in the Pre-Dental Association, and I have my fellow teammate, Nora, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Nora. Um, I'm also on the events team with Delisha, um, and this is our workshop event. Yeah, <laughs> hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so Disclaimer, just want to let you guys know this event is recorded and may be uploaded to YouTube later, but if you want your volunteer hours and all that stuff, just wait till the end and stick with us till the end. And just to let you guys know, this information is our research that we did. Um, combined, it's not a sure way to pass your interview, but it's a sure way to get tips, information, and advice to help ace your interviews. We encourage all of you guys to Make sure you do your own research when you're preparing for your own interviews and take notes if you want in the session and you guys can watch it later. Like it will be uploaded, it's recorded. So, well, it may or may not be uploaded, but yeah. So you guys can get volunteer hours with the Pre-Dental Association for this event. Uh, the link will be sent in the chat at the end of the meeting. Um, also, questions are going to be done at the end of the meeting, uh, but if you do have any questions throughout the meeting, you can type them in the chat, and we do have Gazelle with us as well. She'll be moderating the chat, um, so please stand to the end for the volunteer hour form. Just our agenda for today, uh, we're going to be covering quite a bit of information, um, starting with the different types of interviews. We're going to be going through um, how to prepare for your interviews, how to have a good impression, um, the most common interview questions that are found in almost all dental interviews, um, and just how to prepare tips and tricks to do well, and uh, yeah, how to be confident. So there are three main styles of interviews. Um, the first one is a panel interview. This is usually conducted by either staff members or current dental students. Um, so you usually get two or more people, two to four normally. Uh, and you really want to follow the 80-20 rule with these type of interviews, where it's 20% the interviewer talking, 80% you talking. It seems like a lot, but the whole point of the interview is for them to get to know you. So you really do want to make sure you've got uh, a long enough answer. Uh, the second type of interview is the MMI, which seems to be the most common, especially in Canada. Um, it was invented at McMaster, so uh, a lot of the Canadian schools do use that. And the questions are a lot like Casper questions. It's a lot of situational judgment. Um, and this is kind of done, you're at different stations, so it's multiple mini interviews. You've got different stations and each station you get asked a question and they're all judged completely independently of each other. So if you mess up on one, it's not too big of a deal. You do have other ones that you can, you can kind of improve on. And the last one um, is just traditional one-on-one -on -one interviews. Uh, sometimes when schools have multiple interview rounds, they'll do one of each, um, but traditional one-on-one -on -one interviews, the whole attention's on you. It's all about you and the other person interviewing you. And within these three types of interviews, there are two subsections. And that is open book and closed book. Open book, the, um, the interview will have all of your application, your resume, your grades. They'll already know a lot about you. So it's really important to know your application well. You really need to know what you've done and what you've written in things like your personal statement and on your CV. You really need to be prepared to expand on the stuff that you've already written about. An enclosed book, they will not have your information. They won't know anything about you. It is a completely fresh slate. Um, and you can kind of steer your, your own interview. You know, you can really shine on your strengths and maybe if you want to leave out some of the things you feel less strong about, but uh, you know, both of these have their pros and cons and it really depends on the school.
And that's why it's so important to know your school's interview style. Um, in Canada, MMI seems to be the most common this year with um, UFT, University of Alberta, McGill, and University of Saskatchewan doing them. Uh, University of Alberta is different. They're doing a combination of traditional and MMI. Um, but it really, it really seems to be the most popular for both dental and I found medical schools as well. Okay, so there are things that you should be doing beforehand before your interview. So there are a couple of tips that you could follow. This is just kind of like how to kind of calm you down before your interview and give you tips just to handle the stress of it. So make sure that you are prepared, just prepare, prepare, prepare. There is not, there's nothing of too much preparing. So make sure that you're prepared. Control your stress, have a full night's rest, have a breakfast beforehand, make sure that you eat and hydrate yourself. Be prepared to smile. That shows that you're confident and you, you're like, you know what you're saying, you're confident in what you're saying. Um, work on a confident, steady paced speech. So make sure that you just kind of stay calm and have a steady speech so that it doesn't feel like you're nervous or you're talking too fast or you're talking too slow. So make sure it's just steady. Work on eye contact. You wanna maintain eye contact with your interviewer. You wanna show that you're paying attention and you're attentive. Prepare your professional attire. You are doing a dental school interview at the end of the day. You wanna look professional and yeah, you're applying for this. So know your application and resume very well and know your strengths and weaknesses well. So you're able to draw on those when you're asked certain questions. Okay, so these are some of the top and common dental school interview questions. So some of them could be, tell me about yourself, why dentistry, why the school, what accomplishments, what accomplishments are you most proud of, sorry. Tell me about a time, they're definitely gonna ask, tell me about a time questions. And this is just the time for you to really sell yourself as a deserving candidate. You have made it this far, so make sure that you really sell yourself and don't undermine your experiences. This is a time to really show those skills and accomplishments. And of course, like let them like show it off in a way, but also make sure you're not coming across in a way where you're saying like you have no improvements to work on or that you're perfect in a way. So make sure there's a good balance of portraying the skills, but also showing that you're willing to learn and absorb new skills while being in your prospect dental school, because you are going to be a student at the end of the day. They want to see that you are willing to learn and, and adopt new skills, but this is also a time for you to really draw on the skills that you had in all this time and just talk about those and work, show that you're continually working on polishing your skills every day. Um, there are also dental skills interview questions that they could ask, and those are questions that mostly focus on your skills for the profession. So they wanna make sure that you're able to comprehend what a dentist does and the necessary skills and how you've cultivated these skills yourself and continue to do so to present day. And I'm gonna tell you guys how to answer some of these later on in the presentation. There's a, there's a couple of slides. So we can kind of go over what you could say, like possible answers. So just stay tuned. Um, now there's six easy steps to, that you should take to prepare for your dental school Zoom interview if it's on Zoom. So make sure you include your photo. It's not necessary to have a professional headshot, although it is highly recommended to add it to your Zoom account. So on your interview day, the school faculty and students can match a name to the face. And you can ask someone to take a photo on your cell phone. It's actually really easy now with a lot of the settings on our phones where there's, um, I think, portrait mode and different um, settings. So make sure you just kind of like play around with what works for you. And it's not too hard to get a professional headshot. So try to get that done. Make sure you dress professionally again. Make sure you're smiling. So again, you're confident in your answers and it shows that you're just happy and pleasant and you're excited to be there. Use a background that isn't visually distracting. You kind of want to have a neutral background. So there's nothing in the background that they're looking at and it's, the focus is just all on you. Um, so this is kind of important. It's up to you, but I think this could really set you apart. Make sure that you consider adding name and preferred gender pronouns. 
there has UCSF has requested all students and faculty to include their prefer their preferred gender pronouns on their Zoom name. This shows that when you're attending a dental school interview or any formal setting for that matter, you're making an exceptional first impression. And this shows that you're not assuming, doing just a small gesture via Zoom will speak volumes as to who you are as an individual in and out of dentistry, especially for schools that emphasize inclusion, diversity, and increase in, in representation. So make sure you try to do that as a lot of um, universities are looking at that and looking at those little small nuances. So make sure that you try to do that. Um, get in the zone physically. So before the interview, complete a test run to ensure the video and your audio is working. Just like record a short video to confirm your microphone, background noise and audio are all set. Try it with and without headphones, depending on if you want to wear headphones, but make sure that it's working and there's no technical difficulties. Honestly, just saving yourself some of that technical stress could help a lot on the day of. You don't wanna leave it to the last minute and you definitely like, this is preventable stress. So make sure that anything that can cause potential technical issues or delay on the uh, day of your interview is solved. Visual, so location is really key. Like I said, the ideal location should have a neutral background. Um, they like natural lighting that prevents shadows on your face. And um, there's a lot of people that actually even purchase selfie ring lights to truly enhance it and truly like um, shine in their interviews. So you could look into that if you want, but just try to have natural light and neutral backgrounds mm -hmm. as a main for the visual. So how to prepare an answer. I know a lot of you guys are, you know, wondering how to do that and you need tips for how to prepare and answer questions. So make sure to start off, you use examples. It's really important to provide concrete um, examples. It's easy to say I'm hardworking or I'm really passionate about communication, but it's important to add on how you demonstrated that through your extracurriculars or your workplace or anywhere where you professionally were able to portray that. So how did you show your leadership or how did you, how are you passionate about communication? Number two, um, you need to reflect and take, a, um, you know, to think about the critical moments in your life, stories that reflect true passion and drive, make a mental map of these scenarios that illustrate who you are, see what has shaped you as a person to this day, and make this a chance to show that, sh show them some of that personal insight and, um, this is a time for you to show how passionate you are as a dental candidate. So make sure that you just kind of reflect on those. You have to also take a moment if you need to. Um, it's really okay. Sometimes we are hit with a question where we're really not sure how to answer. It's totally okay to say, that's an interesting question. Can I think about that for a second? And take a moment to gather your thoughts. Um, I will, there's another slide to um, regarding how to answer a question if you don't know how to answer. So there's gonna be a little more detail on that later, but it's totally okay to reflect and take a moment. Obviously you don't wanna to take too long, but taking even a few seconds to formulate your response is so much better than launching into an explanation that doesn't reflect your true thoughts. So the last um, most important thing is know your primary and secondary application thoroughly. It should be like the back of your hand. You really need to know what you've done to learn more about the profession, like shadowing, work experience. You can be asked questions directly from your application. So you need to be prepared for that. And yeah, and acknowledge that there are challenges for dentistry and speak articulately, not robotic or scripted. They're talking to a person at the end of the day, they're, they're talking to you. So they wanna get to know you. So make sure that you sound authentic and genuine and that comes through in all your responses. So just make sure that you make use all of these tips to prepare and answer questions when you're in an interview and before an interview. And uh, just a few tips on how to practice solo. Um, many interviews, uh, especially post COVID are on, gonna be on Zoom. Um, schools that are further away, schools that you can't get to, you have a lot of Zoom interviews. Um, so the best thing to do is record yourself, you know, do it on whichever device you're going to be doing your Zoom interviews for. For me, it would be my laptop. Um, 
and you know give yourself some time to think about your answer and then just start talking I know it's weird to talk to a laptop but I think you know after zoom school not so much um it's a little weird but you know you get used to it um and then once you've recorded yourself it's good to look back and think about what you've done think about your body language how I answered a question the speed at which you were talking um if you're saying um like I do um and just kind of you know your general your general demeanor in the camera another great thing is to use flashcards that's my personal favorite um providing um the flashcards with the questions and then maybe a few notes on your answer if you if you get stuck uh, you can have a few notes on the other side um you know you're not going to be great at your very first time but you know if you practice by yourself if you practice and you have a reference to look back on like a recording of yourself uh it's a good way to um get better and improve over time These are some good tips to avoid freezing and going blank. So you really want to pause before answering. You will have time um, given in your interview to think about your question and to formulate an answer. You want to use that time. Don't answer straight away or else you're just going to be rambling throughout the entire thing. It's good to be intentional about the words that you're speaking. You also really want to prepare yourself. It's all about preparation. If you know what you're talking about, you won't... Uh, give an answer that you don't mean. You also don't wanna chase perfection. Don't think of an eight minute script in your head and try and follow it word for word. Um, just be natural, be yourself. Try and let your own personality shine through. Also, you have to be resilient. If you mess up on one question, it's, it's really not the end of the world, especially in MMI interviews. So you really need to not get down on yourself if you if you um, mess up on a question. You need to be resilient and, you know, just uh, try and do your best for the next ones. You can also repeat the question back to the interviewer. It might give you a few extra seconds. And if you really, really need to, you can ask the interview to uh, repeat the question as well. Okay. So next we're gonna be talking about how much time should you spend preparing? Now, this is honestly very subjective and it really depends on you as a person. Um, it's, it's, it could be different for everyone and that's really gonna be up to you and what you think will be best for you. There's no set required amount of time for preparation, but of course, the more you familiarize yourself with the type of questions they could ask and practice, the more confident you will become and you will feel more ready when the real thing really arrives. A general timeline for beginning to prepare should be ideally after you finish writing your personal statements. So begin with less difficult tasks that can be done throughout the week, such as reading, creating models, um, creating model responses or solo practice and save the in-depth mock interviews for weekends. So you have more time to really look at what you're doing and analyze everything. So yeah, again, be consistent rather than cramming. It's always important to remember that doing it throughout the week for as little as 25 minutes every single day is better than only devoting a few hours on the weekend. Eventually, when the interview day is closer, focus on areas of improvement and do full scale time practice interviews. Always remember preparing, there's an, you can always prepare, but it's better to be over prepared than under prepared. But again, like Nora said, just be yourself, be natural. Um, this is an interview, don't strive for perfection. Um, we're all human, they wanna get to know you as a person and what makes you different than everyone else. So just be yourself and remember that they're looking for authenticity. And you can also collect practice questions and search up techniques and resources. Okay, so how to better have a better interview experience when applying to dental schools? So to prepare for interviews, review frequently asked questions on websites of the, of the school that you are having an interview for. There are so many questions that they give you to prepare from. And there's a lot of questions on the pre-dental website. If you go on our Instagram, go on the website, there's a lot of questions from there. So you can, you can use those and there's a bunch for you to practice from. 
So prepare for interviews by writing down some questions you'd like to ask the interviewer. You want to make sure that you're that you show that you're interested in talking to the person and you're not just viewing it as solely an interview, even though it is an interview. But, you know, you want to make sure that you care about the actual interviewer. You want to make sure that you're engaged with them. Um, make sure to have everything prepared and ready. Get there 10 to 15 minutes early if possible. And again, again, confidence is key. You have to walk in with your head held high. You have gotten this far, so you're gonna be able to do it if you practice, if you know what, like if you just know and you know, you, you're gonna do it fine, like everything will be good. And it kind of gleams within you when you're confident. It's important to master eye contact. And if you are nervous, it shows because you're, you start looking preoccupied and too serious. So just make sure you're present, you're there with the interviewer and just be confident. Okay, so we did go over it previously, but I'm just gonna like a step-by-step -step for how to handle an interview question you don't know how to answer. You just, you've been asked a question and you don't know how to answer. Firstly, it's totally okay just breathe. We have all been there. Sometimes no matter how much we practice and work on it and put an effort, sometimes we just don't see it coming. You're not going to know exactly what they're going to ask you. And it's okay that you won't know how to answer. So it may be awkward in the beginning, but trust me, you, you just have to work through it. And this is a couple of ways that you can work through this. Number one, just pause, take a deep breath to calm any anxiety you know your experiences and you're there for a reason. So just recall some of them to try to help you answer your question. So make sure you kind of, sorry, I'm gonna go number four. That's what I'm gonna talk about in number four. I was gonna skip to number four. But number two, ask the interviewer to repeat the question as it could buy you some time to think. So if you ask them to repeat it, you have some time to really think what they're asking for while they're repeating the question. Number three, talk it out with them. It's fine. Let them know what you're thinking. If you need some time, then say so. And if you need them to rephrase it, you can let them know. Number four, this is what I wanted to say. You have to envision and reflect on your resume to help you out. You really have to envision that resume and personal statement and your application in your head when you get these answers that you don't know. Sorry, these questions that you don't know how to answer. And it can help you draw on something very relevant. There's a lot that you submitted in your application. There's something in there that they wanna ask about. So try to envision that and try to pick out what is relevant to that question. And lastly, what's the worst that could happen? Just give it a shot and answer the question to the best of your ability. And don't let that affect your entire interview. Move on stronger and confident to the next questions. It's just one bad question, or maybe you didn't know how to answer one question. That doesn't mean you have to carry that forward to the other inter sorry to the other questions so just move on answer it to the best you can and then continue after so we're going to be going over a few common interview questions these are probably the four most common that you'll hear uh the first one i'm sure you've heard it in a job interview i'm sure you've heard it when you meet a new person just tell me about yourself the classic opening question, it can really set the tone of the interview and uh, show how prepared you are. And you just got to take this opportunity to introduce yourself, get to get to know the interviewer, get let the interviewer get to know you. Uh, what's your name? Where are you from? Any cool hobbies? Anything that makes you unique? Uh, and what are you most excited about about the interview and um, your perspective, um, your perspective career at this dental school? Next one is why dentistry? Uh, this is really another common one. Um, it sounds really personal to your similar, your person, sorry, sounds very similar to your personal statement, um, but that's the whole point. Make sure you know your personal statement well. And um, sometimes it's gonna be a closed book interview and they haven't read their, your personal statement. So um, reiterating this um, shows that you know your application well. And it adds some personality. It adds some passion to your personal statement and uh, allows you to, you know, really uh, get, uh, let them get to know your personality. So why this school? They're definitely most likely going to ask you this question because 
they're interested on why do you want to go to our school? Why, why this school out of so many? So make sure you do your research. You have to come prepared with knowledge about the university that you're applying for. Try and research these following areas to kind of go about answering, answering these questions. What makes this particular dental school unique compared to others? Why did that stand out to you? What are the mission statements, the values that stand out to you? What, how does it resonate with what you want? Do they have any specific technology advancements that other schools don't have and thus attracted you towards this one? Is there any extracurriculars that stood out to you? The staff at their dental school and any renowned professors or clinical teaching personnel. So make sure you try to really hone in on all of these type of questions that could help you answer this and make sure you really know why this school, the surroundings, the locations, anything else. Always relate the question back to dentistry and make sure that your interviewer sees that you have done your background research on the school. They wanna make sure that you're a candidate that really knows the school in and out as much as you can. So yeah, it's really important. So like I said in the beginning, they are gonna ask you, tell me about a time most likely and there, it's gonna be formulated in the sense of, tell me about a time you showed leadership, tell me about a time you failed, tell me about a time you worked on a team. This shows a school that you're able to really think back onto your experiences and articulate your thoughts while allowing you to talk about your experiences. So make sure you just kind of, again, reflect on experiences that you've had, whether that was in your workplace, whether that was in your extracurriculars, wherever volunteering, make sure shadowing, make sure that you are able to kind of draw on that and think about your meaningful experiences. Again, like think about what shaped you as a person. So having a bank of stories can help you think on how you're feeling. Okay, so we've all heard this. I wanna help people. Um, this is a big red flag. You. You should not be saying this in an interview um, when they ask you why dentistry. It's, it's just not, you don't want to go that way. Um, sorry. So any profession you do is helping people. So teachers help provide education. Police officers help keep law and order. How does that really differentiate you? Helping people is done in almost every profession and of course, dentistry too, but that's not a good enough answer. It's become really cliche. You want to show, not tell in your interviews. How, it, how does it show that you want to help people? Have you done volunteer work? Were you fascinated when you started shadowing in a clinic? Were you fascinated by what the people do? And were you, did you see yourself doing that for the rest of your life? Did you in, involve yourself in certain programs and initiatives? Have you helped less fortunate people than you? There's many different ways you can help people, not just by doing a career. So it's easy to say that and not do anything about it. So show examples of how you showcase that. Dentistry isn't just about helping people. There's a lot of skills technically and analytically that you're gonna have to have to be a dentist in the profession itself. It shows that being saying that you wanna help people, it shows that you're genuine and, sorry, it shows that you're not genuine in your interest and or experience or well, well versed enough to show what the profession actually entails because you know that dentistry is very challenging and there are challenging aspects. It's important to really think critically when they ask you this question and not just say something that vague. So yeah, again, every single profession helps people. So definitely don't say this. It, it comes across as kind of disgenuine and that you're just not really sure why you're here. So yeah. So what can you say when they ask you, why do you want to be in dentistry or be a dentist? There's a lot of things you could say, um, starting off with fascination for science. Like I said, are there, was there an aspect of dentistry that fascinated you in the foundations in science? So as having an interest in the human body and cells, it's important because that's where all the dental knowledge is. Did oral health, um, fascinate you. So talk about how and why you have an interest in science and what you've done to actually demonstrate that. If you worked in labs with, I don't know, TAs or research assistants, it's important to kind of talk about those areas that interested you. 
Um, so interest in serving communities and helping others. A massive part of being dentist is working with patients and having a genuine, compassionate, empathetic nature. You're going to be seeing clients and patients every day. So it's important to be able to talk about how you can form that connection with them and how you're there to give back to the community and experiences you have. So through volunteer work and helping others and all those things. So another thing you could say is why is that, what does dentistry, how is that set apart? How is it different from other professions? Only talking about the two above aspects are relate to almost allied health fields. So doctors also do that. Um, a lot of nurses, there's a lot of other healthcare fields that do the same thing. Um, so you want to talk about the more analytical nature, like I said earlier, the critical thinking, the decision making, problem solving skills needed to find a diagnosis. There's going to be a lot of times where you're faced with a patient when you're in dental school or at practicing dentistry where you, it might not be clear cut as to what exactly is going on. So it's important to think analytically and think about how you can think outside of the box if there is something that you come across where you're not sure. So it's, it's important to talk about all those soft skills that you do have and also technical skills. Things not to say. So this is again, a big no. Talking about the social status or financial aspects. Don't talk about this because this in itself, like it's just, it's not really genuine. Like it doesn't show that you want to do the profession. You're just getting it, doing it for the monetary benefits or whatever, like the social status that's, that comes across as disgenuine. And yeah, just don't say that. Um, saying that dentistry is better than any career. Again, you want to talk about how it's interesting. This is a time for you to sh like talk about your skills and all those things, analytical skills and talk about why dentistry is for you out of the other professions. It's not to talk down on any other professions. You don't wanna be doing that. Um, there are equally important professions out there and you, you're not talking down on any other career. So you want another one is you wanna be a dentist just because one of your family members are. So this is something that you really need to reflect and explain why this impacted you. So did, was there something that impacted you in your life from an early age or even later on, it doesn't really matter, like that made you realize that you want to be a dentist. But saying that, oh, just one of my family members are in it isn't really a conclusive and in-depth answer. So again, definitely don't say I want to help people. Very cliche and overused. It's you have to find important other ways to say that and do not talk down on any other career or talk about how the talk about financial aspects or social status, just these are some things to not say or stray away from in your interview. Okay, so why dentistry and not, for example, medicine? So it's important that you respect all the other health professions too, but talk about that you wanna do dentistry because of things like the more analytical, critical thinking nature, Finding a diagnosis is like detective work, quite literally, because you're not going to know exactly what it is right away, maybe. And there's a lot of aspects that you have to look at. There's a lifelong learning that you're going to be in. You're going to be constantly evolving as a dentist. You're going to be learning new things every year. So it's really important to make sure that you talk about the growth that you're going to be facing while pursuing this or being in dental school. Um, there's a lot of teaching opportunities and help that you could do for younger dental students, as well as helping patients understand what's happening in their own mouth and bodies. It's, it's a really confusing feeling not knowing what's going on in your own body. And you've been given kind of a like talking about how you've been given that role to kind of be there and guide them through that. That's a huge role. And it's important to talk about how it's so it, it's a big like role to take on and you have to be there for so many people and make sure that you build that trust with them and are able to take care of them in a way that they need to be taken care of. Um, some other things to say is there's going to be you're going to be working in a fast-paced environment in dental school while you're a dentist 
So there's going to be a lot of emergency situations and you need to make big decisions on the spot sometimes that could affect the outcome of someone's health and life. So make sure that you're aware that, you know, it's important to work under pressure and maybe talk about how you have been able to work under pressure. And that's something that you look forward to doing for a long time or in dental school or showing those skills. So there's an aspect of treating patients, but also understanding them from biopsych biopsychosocial approach. So again, these are people, you're not dealing with um, robots. These are not, these are actual humans that are coming to you to, you know, get a solution. They need help. They need guidance. They, they need relief and you need to understand it. You need to have that emotional aspect to answering these questions. Uh, make sure that you are understanding that this is, this is a person from different, there's going to be a bunch of people come from different backgrounds, different ideas, like whatever it is, you have to have that sensitivity and you need to be understanding of how to be there for them as a human too, and just build that trust and connection and be able to be the best dentist you can, not just analytically or critically, but also as a human. So, yeah. Um. So you've made it this far in your application, you've gotten an interview, the very last thing you want to do is ruin your interview by being disrespectful. You know, you really need to keep in mind that uh, not to put down other professions, um, not to say you're in it for the money and, you know, not to say, oh, a dentist is the best thing you can be in the world. You know, you need to, you need to be conscious of, of, um, of the, like other people and people who are choosing a different path and, you know, just be respectful. Uh, be polite and you know don't don't put anybody else down for the sake of bringing yourself up yeah, absolutely so these are some questions that you could ask at the end of the interview like i said it's important to engage with your interviewer and it's important to show that you're present and you're ready to have a conversation and not just answer robotically so to show that you are interested and you've been present so these are some questions that you could ask if you can't think of any others. Of course, ask the question that you thought of, but if you can't think of any, these are some. So you could ask, in your opinion, what would you say dental students like most about your school of dentistry? Do you foresee any significant changes to the dental school curriculum within the next year or two? What are some characteristics of students who are successful here? This could be a really good one too. What advice would you give me as a prospective dental student? So it taught this really, this question really shows that you are willing to learn. You are willing to be like a sponge and absorb all the information you can from someone that's already in the dental school, already part of the faculty, already part of the interview team. This shows that you're willing to learn, not just talk about the skills that you've gained, but also talking about how you're willing to polish those skills further and develop yourself as a student, as a prospective dentist one day. So this could be a really good question to ask. And if you're interested, you could ask what specialty programs are available if you're interested in furthering your studies after dentistry. It's a good idea to ask anything, anything. Just make sure that you should ask a question at the end of the interview because it really shows. Like if they ask you, do you have any questions for me? And you say no, it just, it's like, okay, like, it, it shows that you know everything or that you feel like you know everything. Make sure that you're willing to learn and show that attitude through this. Okay, and I think this is coming to the end. So how to get your interviewer to remember you. So this is really important. You want to leave a lasting impression on your interviewer. You want to make sure that your first impression was amazing and exceptional. So make sure to connect with your interviewer. Again, like I've been saying this whole time, make sure you connect, ask questions, engage with your interviewer, make sure that they know that you're present. So get to know your interviewer, how long, ask how long they've been in the school, what they do within the school, what they like the most about the school. So try to find a common connecting point as you guys, they've definitely heard people talking all day, like about themselves. So I think they'd, they'd really appreciate um, you know, you asking what they're interested in or something that you guys can just even have a small laugh about, you know, like it's, it's a good idea to connect in that way. Um, it's going to set you apart. Um, remembering their name. 
I know this could be really hard because you know you're caught up in how to answer a question um you're not going to be really thinking you might be anxious and completely forget and blank out you can always ask them their name again to remind you and make sure you know shake their hand at the end by thanking them by their name that's a plus that shows that you care about the interviewer themselves too because they're also human they've been doing interviews all day show that you care about them too um and if you want you can send them a thank you card so before before leaving try to inquire their mailing address if they're comfortable with it of course if they're not comfortable with it don't bother but you know you could always just say it then like thank you so much for this interview i really enjoyed speaking with you or whatever it is and if they're comfortable with it then within a week of the interview send out a short sweet thank you card and lastly like me and nora said be you um you gotta just be yourself just be you show up and show who you are as a person we gave you a bunch of tips but that doesn't mean that that's like a template to follow it's it's just use what makes sense to you and be yourself you wanna okay um mock interviews so me and nora will be hosting this if you want to talk jump in nora please go ahead um we're going to be hosting this from February 6th to February 10th. Um, there is a sign up sheet and I can send that right now in the chat. Um, Nora, you can go ahead. Like, Yeah, I uh, guess I'll just send the mock interview sign up sheet. Um, those are running all next week, Monday to Friday. Um, Delisha and I are hosting them. So sign up deadlines tonight at midnight. Um, we're going to be doing mock interviews, half an hour time slots each. So if you want to give it a shot with somebody other than yourself, um, let us know, sign up, and we'll see you then. Yep, definitely sign up. We don't bite, guys. <laughs> um, now, there is a feature event coming out very soon. Um, on Thursday, February 16th, there is going to be a How to Become a Dental Assistant, a Pathway to Dentistry. Gazelle will be in that and she will be one of the hosts. So definitely come in and learn about all these uh, dental assisting experiences before dental school. And there is a link on the website, I believe. So sign up, it's gonna be on Thursday, February 16th at 7 p.m. Okay, thank you so much for being here till the end. If you guys stuck it through, good job. Um, again, you guys are here and you guys are showing effort to like learn these skills. So that in itself, good job. Like you guys have taken in so much information already. Even if you didn't take notes, you've taken in a lot of information. And I guess we're gonna answer questions now, Nora? Yeah, and uh, also Gazelle sent the volunteer form for hours for this event. Uh, if you guys wanted to sign up for that as well. If I you guys have any questions, let us know.